So now here's a question that you can be asked. And the question is, here is a chemical reaction. So it's ammonium ion and nitrite ion makes nitrogen gas and two water molecules. And somebody says, okay, in terms of concentration change uh, over time, what is going to be the rate law for this reaction? Or, or specifically, it's called the differential rate law. Now you have to be given some information to be able to figure out certain things here, like this is the rate law, but the deal is that here are some things that you need to discover. The con, the con, okay, so <laughs> rate equals K, that K is the rate constant, and you're going to be asked later to be able to find that. How will you find that rate constant K? Depends on two things. These two powers by which these concentrations are taken are not known and you need to find those to be able to write what we call the rate law for this reaction. So the question is, determine the rate law given this information here. And what you're given is an experiment where this reaction is conducted in a laboratory and the ability to be able to calculate the initial rate of reaction is there. I'm not sure necessarily how that's going to be done for a reaction like this, but let's just say that you've got the ability to be able to calculate that rate in moles per liter per second. How many moles per liter are these decomposing or reacting per second? So that is moles per liter seconds, that's the unit there, and that initial rate is given for three different trials for this reaction, where trials number one, two, and three have different concentrations of these chemicals reacting to produce these rates. So then we can use this information to determine what the orders are, that's what those are called, the powers are called the orders of each reactant is, and then the overall order for this reaction. Now, um, I'm going to employ a method here that just uses kind of common sense, and I hope that you can, you can understand this. Um, there's a mathematical determination that all of your books uh, show you, your textbooks show you, for every example here given, and you may have to report that on, a, on an exam, but generally speaking, if you understand the technique I'm going to show you, this is all that's necessary to be able to regurgitate on an advanced placement exam, an IB exam, or a university exam, because the professors and the, and the markers want to see if you understand the concept without doing a heck of a lot of math. So watch this. In order to determine these numbers here, what we need to do is we need to understand that if we have a trial here where the concentration of, of chemicals are given and then a rate of reaction happens. If we perform another trial and hold one of those chemical concentrations constant, we can determine how this concentration affects the rate of change. This one being held constant doesn't affect the change, affect the change in the concentration, but maybe this does. So now let's look at lines one and two, or experiments or trials one and two, and compare them to each other to determine how the NO neg NO2 negative concentration affects the rate of reaction. So when this is held constant and this concentration is doubled, doubled, the reaction rate, look what it does. It goes from 1.5 times 10 negative 3 to 3 times 10 negative 3. That's a doubling. A doubling of this creates a doubling of this. So now I want you to think about this. Now, some people are going to say, well, is that a second order or something? No, it's not. Now, 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 watch this. If this chemical right here is held constant, and K, of course, is called the rate constant, so it's constant for every one of these trials at a specific temperature. This reaction is occurring at a given temperature. This entire thing can change. The rate of reaction can change, and the, the, that constant changes for every change in temperature. Okay. If we're holding this constant here, this is constant, which means that's constant, which means that's constant, then when we change this concentration by doubling it, and that causes a doubling of the rate of reaction, we multiply that rate by 2, that's by 2. You see what I'm just doing? A double here and a double here. If a doubling of this, when then multiplied by everything here, it makes a doubling here, then this must be to the first power, because 2 to the 1 is equal to 2, and that 2 doubling here on this side creates a doubling here. That order by which that number is taken, or that power, for this chemical right here is 1. Now you don't have to write the 1, but I'm just illustrating that that is a first order 
reaction or reactant um, power. Okay, so now we do the other chemical and we see in the, graph, in, in, the, in the chart of information where we hold this one constant and then we change this one. So now look, this concentration from trial 2 to trial 3, this concentration is kept constant of the NO2 negative and now we can analyze how the NH4 positives change in concentration and what that does here. Now watch this, here it comes. We double the concentration here. So there's like a doubling of this right here. That's, that's, that's basically times two. I'm just putting a two there for doubling. What happened to the rate of reaction? It went from three times 10 to negative three to 1.2 times 10 to negative two. Whoa, 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 what the heck is that? Well, if you divide that number into that number, you get a number that's really easy to understand here. Oh, now, you know what else? 1.20 times 10 to the negative 2 is also 12.0 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so now you can actually just forget those numbers and just compare this. 3 to 12. How many times is 3 going to 12? Four times. So now look at this. Every time, or, or when, <laughs> the concentration of this chemical is doubled, the rate here goes up four times. How do you get four? Everything here is constant. This is constant. This doubles. What is the power to which this is taken to make this a 4 when this is doubled? 2 squared equals 4, right? There you go. And so, that means then that this is going to be a 2. And ladies and gentlemen, you have now just done this. If somebody says, calculate the rate law for this reaction right here, you have analyzed it and come up with that. And that's the rate law right there. Hey, so what would have happened if you triple a concentration or something like that and it goes up nine times? Well, three squared is nine, so that would be a second order. Did, did that make sense? <laughs> and what if you had doubled the concentration and it went up eight times? Well, two to the cubed is eight. And so therefore, that reaction would be third order. Yeah, okay, there you go. Now, by the way, this is also a because you add the exponents together, 2 plus 1 here, overall, this is called a third order reaction. Now, let's calculate K, and, um, and, and I'll show you how to do units for K as well.